Hello. I thought I'd give a, a new chat about mediums and their place in spiritualism, which I've written down actually. Ever since the beginning of modern spiritualism and its mediums in 1848, there have been shouts of fraud from outside of it and vocal criticisms of the standard of mediumship and mediums themselves from within its serried and diverse ranks. Modern spiritualism is unlike any other religion, inasmuch as it was brought into existence by ordinary, if any human beings can be considered that, people both on this earthly side and from the spirit side of life. It thereafter expanded and has continued in that way until the present day. The practice of mediumship itself is as old as the human race and it has been referred to in many ancient texts. From these, we know that there have always been those with the ability and aptitudes to receive communication from the he heavenly realms, the world to come, and from which place we came, and from all levels of that spirit dimension. Now, as this is a spiritualist discourse meant for spiritualists, basically, we won't talk about the various frequencies of life from the physical earthly plane to the other spirit-only dimensions from the lowest of vibrations to the highest. We will assume that that knowledge is already with you. And for the present, we will leave the philosophy and religion of spiritualism out of it and just take a look at the internecine and interminable, sometimes downright nasty arguments and often scathing criticisms directed at mediums and their displayed skills from within spiritualism itself. I'm of the opinion that everyone, anyone who has the ability to perceive something of the dimensions wherein lived the majority of those who once lived closest to us in their own lives on earth and is able to describe those surroundings and the individuals in spirit to the satisfaction of that person left here in the physical and who can somehow through their etheric body relay a message proving those persons' continued existence to the recipient here, whether in a one-to-one -one private setting or in a public demonstration, wherever that may take place, is to be accorded the dignity and respect that they deserve. And there you have the Achilles heel of spiritualism. Spiritualism only exists because of mediums. It has only ever existed because of mediums. But mediums not only come in all shapes and sizes, ages, political leanings, colours and sexual orientations. They come in varying aspects of spiritual thought and methodologies whereby communication is delivered. And never has the old adage, chacun son goût, to each his own taste, more commonly Anglo-Saxonised as one man's meat is another man's poison, been so vividly demonstrated as a truism. All the spiritualist organisations and groups worldwide are dedicated to upholding not just their own brand of spiritualism, be it as a standalone religion or a denomination of another like Judaism or Christianity, but the mediumship on which it relies. Mediums have that heavy responsibility and much is done to teach and nurture mediums basically to ensure that, like life itself, spiritualism continues forever. The chorus of disapproval is getting heard more now in these days of social media and instant messaging of the earthly variety than ever before, in that now far-off time when people met in the halls and churches, said what they had to say at the time, usually over a cup of tea after service, and then went home. With the advent of social media, Facebook pages, live chats, Instagram podcasts, there has also been the unprecedented appearance of mediums offering readings, communications from spirit and filming of demonstrations of mediumship and services, often as they happen. So they have a worldwide audience and they also receive instant worldwide comments as well. Apart from mediums shown serving at a service who seem to escape it, any ill feelings and antagonism and insensitivity towards mediums by other mediums is immediately made public by default. 
agreed there is also the opportunity to praise mediums, but those negative comments keep a coming and are only damaging. It's infuriating to some of us to see and hear what we would consider appallingly sketchy mediumship going out under the umbrella term it has now become. But nevertheless, on that public stage, as long as a recipient is convinced, and dare I say comforted, by such a sketchily delivered message, the medium has done their job. But it ill behoves spiritualists to argue in public at least in the old days, it was a matter between ourselves, but now this is taking place in the glare of the social media spotlight. In order to bring harmony to the entire spiritualist camp, shouldn't we decide that genuine mediumship is the first criteria by which we judge mediums in general? And only secondly, by judging the level of attunement to the spirit side frequencies, observing the precise information they are able to relay to recipients that decides the level of mediumistic attainment that they have reached, so easily discernible to mark in terms of fairly bad to good to excellent. Encouraging our, among ourselves education for both mediums and the general public about what really constitutes genuine mediumship and after that, good mediumship. And in my book, The, the Spiritualist Handbook, I have actually uh, worked out seven principles of mediumship. First, mediums should clearly demonstrate that they are the exchange between the material world and the world of spirit by the evidential information received from communication in spirit that they then give to recipients still on the earth plane and thus prove that life is unconditionally continuous after physical death. Two, mediums should deliver their, that evidential information as given facts and not involve recipients in a question and answer session. Mediums should adequately describe the passing condition of the individual communicator from spirit to the recipient and gender. Mediums should impart convincing details of the spirit side communicator to the earthly recipient and the relationship. Five, mediums should give informative description of the communicating individual's earthly appearance and relay memorable events that would have occurred in the spirit communicator's earthly lifetime and share personal memories with the recipient. Six, mediums should only then relay the information given to them by the communicator in spirit about the earthly conditions of the recipient to demonstrate their occasional presence and continued caring for that person. Seven, mediums should then pass on a spiritual message of comfort and upliftment from the communicator in spirit to the recipient on this side of life. There, there you are, the, the spiritualist handbook, which of course is available on Amazon. I hope that you've enjoyed this little chat and uh, if you are a spiritualist that you can uh, warm to some of the content and remember that all mediums are worthy of, of our love and that is after all something that we uh, preach. We preach love to all, serve all and uh, I hope that this has been of interest to you. And if you are not a spiritualist, perhaps you'd like to consider our way of life as something of interest to you. Because we believe and we know that life is eternal to everybody and that eternal progress is open to every soul. God bless you. Goodbye for now. Bye.